BJP crossing with its allies 400, BJP with its allies 370, BJP with its allies 300, BJP with its allies 272, and the BJP itself at 250. 250, 272, 300, 370, 400. Which is the most likely, which is the least likely scenario on the 4th of June? Who wants to start? <laughs> no, I think, uh, in my opinion, the scenario is very clear in my mind. It's BJP along with the allies, it is close to 300. It can't, I don't see BJP with allies anywhere close to 370 or 400 is a remote possibility. But BJP with its, as BJP on its own, this will, is, will BJP on its own be over 272? But that's not the question which you asked. You asked, you gave me these four scenarios. I picked up the one. Okay, so the one you picked up is 300. In that 300, is the BJP over 272 or below 272? I would say BJP over 272, but not by a very large margin. It's just slightly above 272. Okay. Pradeep Gupta. So, uh, Rajdeep, with due respect to you, I have three scenario two. <laughs> one is that for me, the food is half cooked at this point of time for us. Second, we are, as a polling agency, we are restricted to say or believe or reveal or release any kind of number whatsoever. And the third one is the most important one. M more than often, you have been proven pollster like us wrong meaning you have a better understanding of political scenario in India than us for sure. I am coming to that. And most importantly at this point of time, you have travelled across the country, so let me try and do exit poll from you. No, I can't do it. I am not allowed. I can't throw a number. You are supposed to, you are paid for this, yeah? No, no. If, if if India today tells me, Rajdeep, we are paying you today, if you get the number right, you are getting an extra bonus, I'll throw a number. If, I, I need a... Kalipuri, is that... No, no. No, we are in Mumbai, so, you know, in Mumbai, we are, some of us can call the shots. So, we are saying, if we get it right, bonus. If we uh, don't get it right, business as usual. <laughs> No, but, but okay, let, let me Rahul, just throw another set of numbers at them. Pradeep is playing extremely safe. So the other angle is the Congress, the four scenarios. The Congress gets 100 seats plus. The Congress gets 75 seats plus. The Congress is around 50. The Congress is below 50, which is the most likely scenario, Sanjay Kumar. So now Pradeep first. <laughs> no, no, as I mentioned that, you know, it's not fair or rather legitimate on my part to say or agree to any kind of number you are throwing on to me. Is it more competitive than 2019? It is any election for that matter always very competitive, very exciting and the reason I'll say and now the five, now you will say Pradeep, aap gol gol ghumare ho, Rahul will say that. Bore kar rahe ho, Gupta ji, music chalate dance karate hain aapko hai. ऐसे कुछ बता नहीं रहे हो आप मैं बताता हूं आपको कि अभी जो आपने अभी एन ब्रेमा को नहीं सुना इतने मोर कंपेटिटिव मोर कंपेटिटिव यू नो लेट्स बी सीरियस फॉरगेट नंबर्स फॉर अ मोमेंट या इट इज मोर कंपेटिटिव इट इज मच मोर कंपेटिटिव देन 2019 ना फॉरगेट द 19 इट इज मोर कंपेटिटिव ओके सो बिकॉज़ 19 हैज सम नंबर्स सो आई डोंट वांट टू गेट एनीवेयर नियर टू Closer to any number. You won't get a call from the Prime Minister's office. Don't no, no, worry. It doesn't matter. I, if I say he's winning, wh what's the problem? So I'm not worried about any kind of call. I have to stick to my business and profession. Okay. And my profession doesn't allow to serve half-cooked food. You will not like it. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. In Chhattisgarh, you only told me, Pradeep, you got wrong very badly. I said yes, and everybody got wrong uh, Chhattisgarh very badly. Despite of that, there was a 46 number for BJP I have shown, and 50 number of seats for Congress I have shown, meaning 46 for BJP, meaning there is also Congress 40 numbers. There was a one scenario, meaning we have shown that BJP may form the government. You, you had alternate scenarios. And you said just the four seats here and there, and everybody said, Pradeep, you are wrong. 
Yeah, that's a state assembly election. But uh, uh, Sanjay, what? Sanjay, you want to give me the Congress, the most likely scenario? No, I would go back to the second question which you asked. That do I see this election more competitive compared to 2019? Uh, both with regard to BJP, both with regard to Congress. I think, yes, it is definitely a more competitive election. And since I have expressed my view about what is the scenario for, likely scenario for NDA, as, of, as I see now, uh, in all probability, Congress is improving its tally compared to what Congress tally was in 2019. Uh, where does it stop? Do I see Congress getting figures in three digit? No, I don't see that happening. So, as I said, real numbers, very difficult to figure out, but yes, my own sense is that Congress is on upward slide and BJP is slightly on the decline. Sanjay is being far more candid than Pradeep is. Gupta ji, tabhi batate jab music chalta ho, dance karte ho, na ho batate nahi hai. He only wants to dance. He's been practicing his dance moves. But since Rajdeep spoke so much of money being spent and poll being conducted, so much money has been spent on Rajdeep traveling as well. So Rajdeep, you tell me, this is your audience at your house, all your yes. friends and well-wishers. I am telling you from the bottom of my heart, he has been right most of the time since I got associated with him. I am telling you, in 2016, in 2016, that was the first time when we got associated with India Today Group. And five states was there, Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Assam, Kerala. He told me, Pradeep, I have a doubt on your one number. Your fourth state seems to be bang on. And that is Tamil Nadu. You want to revise it? I said, Pradeep, we have tried enough. Let's go with this. He said, no, it can be reversed. And which was the case. You are market, Pradeep Ji. He is giving me a post-retirement option. But Rahul, to answer your question, there are three things that I think are... I think this is the election which will be decided by the woman voter. There is no vote bank in this country today as important as the woman voter. And the problem is when television anchors or newscasts, they interview more men than women. Because the men come forward. The women are in the background. If you meet the silent woman, you get to know what's happening in an election. I remember last year in Karnataka, there was this woman sitting at the side of the temple quietly. And I just went up to her and then, you know, it was in Canada. But eventually I got, she said, price of kerosene. Too high. And I will not vote for this government. I want this government out. And you sensed in that woman exactly. Because she didn't come to the camera. The men come to the camera. The women, you have to go and talk to them. So I think the woman voter will decide. Particularly in North and Central India. And I think Rahul, somewhere this time the young voter is... I haven't seen so many young voters in rural India talk the narratives they are. They are watching social media and reels night and day and they have very very strong opinions so i think these two the what i call the new my mahila and yuva previously mahila my was muslim yadav now in northern india it's mahila and yuva and they are deciding much more than people sitting in halls like this who will attend our shows but won't go and vote but when you look when at i look the... at mumbai's voting i mean they're 50 percent in south mumbai it's terrible I mean, you think about it, Rahul. So, but, but the bigger picture, Rahul, How I think How many is people here voted? Oh, that's this is great. more than 50%. But they also come to an election conclave, right? So obviously, <laughs> the others are sitting on some pub and having a nice evening. So there's also a difference to that, yes. But, but, but Rahul, I think what is, what is happening is, look, the one common factor from north to south, east to west is Prime Minister Modi. I mean, this election is, do you want Mr. Modi to be in power for another five years or you don't want him? I think he is a unifying factor in that sense. But I am seeing state by state narratives, Rahul, which is, suggests it's a normal election. You come to Maharashtra, you hear of water scarcity. Sahil Zoshi and I went 50 kilometers away from Pune. Women are walking 5 kilometers for a bucket of water. That's the reality of this country. You go to UP, paper leaks. Every student will come and say, this is the paper leak karwati hai or paper leaks can't be stopped. You go to some other corner of the country uh, uh, in Tamil Nadu, the issues are again very different, uh, uh, Rahul. So I think issues are changing from region to region, rural, urban. I'm playing as safe as Pradeep as you can see. But the one statistic, Rahul, that I point out too, one is the BJP won Rahul 224 seats by 50% vote share and more. 
you're going to need a huge swing away from the BJP for the BJP to be defeated in this election. So, I mean, I can't see a scenario at the moment where the BJP doesn't form a government, whether it's in coalition or whether it's past 272. Uh, and number two, Rahul, in the last two elections, in direct fights between Congress and BJP, 90% of the seats have been won by the BJP. So unless the opposition has offered a better alternative, I'm not so sure that uh, uh, the opposition is in a position at the moment to win India. They may win parts of India, but I don't think they can at the moment win nationally in every state, on, in the key states. I think there are two key states at the moment, Maharashtra where we are now and Uttar Pradesh. These two states, something is churning in Uttar Pradesh. I haven't seen Uttar Pradesh in a long time churning in the manner it is. Will it be enough only to change vote share or could it change seat share? And Maharashtra, I am delighted to see Maharashtra as competitive as, as it is. It's good that this has become the state where finally people are talking politics. So that's, I've played very safe. My own sense is, uh, we'll be finished on, this result will be over by 12 noon on 4th, whichever way. We won't have to wait too long, it'll be over by in the, three hours. Before that, on 1st June, on the same very platform, India Today group, television channels and other media houses, you will get to see Access My India, India Today numbers. And I'm sure we will try and get result before result. Gupta ji can teach marketing to Shah Rukh Khan at this So I'm point. not playing safe, but but mujhe pabandi lagai hui hai ECI ne, so I cannot uh, deviate from that. You know, what we want to do is make this session as interactive as possible. So feel free to jump in and ask questions. I'll start with Sahil Joshi. Sahil, go on. Uh, so, uh, so first of all, I want to... Uh, talk about, I mean, everyone talks about women voters. And when uh, women voters ki baat ki jati hai, tab wo kehte hain ki, bhai, labarthi yojna hai unko diya hai. Uh, it's give and take. Aapne wo labarthi yojna diya hai, iske liye unka vote mil raha hai. Dousri taraf, aapke exit poll mein, ye hamesha dikhta hai ki, unemployment bhoat bada issue hai. Aap yuvaon se baat karte hain, to wo bolte hain ki, unemployment ki samasya hamare paas hai. To aisi konsi mahila hogi ki, jisko apne bachche ko naukri nahi mil rahi hai, wo uske liye bada issue nahi hoga. दस साल से आप एक ही स्कीम वहां पर चला रहे हो क्या उसी पर वो खुश है क्या उसको लेकर कहीं ना कोई भी स्कीम अगर एक्सटेंड हो जाती है तो उसके बाद उसकी आ, आ, उसकी जो नवीनता है वो खत्म हो जाती है आपको कुछ नया उसमें लाना पड़ता है क्या उस तरीके से इस विमेन वोटर्स को नहीं देखा जा सकता क्योंकि दस साल से हम सिर्फ उसी की बात कर रहे हैं नहीं नहीं दस साल से क्यों बात कर रहे हैं साहिल आप उसको समझ लीजिए यहां मैं खुल के बात कर सकता हूं आप इंडिया को जान लीजिए पहले इंडिया क्या है सेवेंटी परसेंट रूरल थर्टी परसेंट अर्बन अर्बन मीनिंग सिक्स थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड सिटीज एंड टाउन सिक्स थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड सिटीज एंड टाउन कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन दूसरे साइड पे रूरल है तो जो 100 वोट कास्ट होते हैं 67% कास्ट हुआ उसका 80% परसेंट इज रूरल एंड पुअर एंड देयर लाइवलीहुड लार्जली डिपेंड ऑन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ द डे प्लीज अंडरस्टैंड दिस एंड देयर लिविंग इज 100 डॉलर लेस देन 100 डॉलर अ मंथ मीनिंग वॉट they have to depend on government aid and these government aids are starting with road electricity water education health pds ration and form related suvidhayen jisko aap ya vyavasthayen kehte hain be it seeds fertilizer subsidized rate and water and electricity for irrigation so this is the reality and coming to the women country ke under 50%, 50-50 women and men, 90% of the women in this country is depend on the male member of the family, so-called CWE. So they are largely depend on the CWE and when you are living in a, a kind of underprivileged situation, so whosoever comes and try and give you some kind of a comfort at the leeway, they are bound to skew towards whosoever is there in the helm of it as a government. So these days, these women think government is their CWE. Government is their CWE. 
so that is the precisely and this is the only demography which contribute 50 percent of the total chunk which is the biggest number now coming to the youth now what had happened because of demographic shift in last particularly 10 years earlier in the age of 18 to 25 years of age there used to be contribution of 17 percent one seven generally 15 percent to 20 percent population of that electors used to be 17 percent average i am talking about now because of demographic shift this 17 has become 22 and half which is a substantial number number one number two by nature as a youth you want things on a rapid fast speed and that is the precisely reason why they seems to be more vocal more impatient and what you see and what you heard as Rajdi pointed out their voices whereas women voices is in silos so coming to your unemployment and all those things i'll tell you last 50 years there was unemployment and inflation issue and it will be for next 50 years the question is who is better prepared to address these issues and that is how electors elect the government or the leader for that matter so pradeep can't speak much at this moment about uh, the exit poll numbers but i know he has very strong opinions on the issue of hindutva because there are many in the bjp rss who think this government wins because they have a very strong hindutva tilt your view is that no hindutva is a very marginal factor it's actually the work that they do on development which helps them win Explain that to everyone who's sitting here. Same thing, Rahul. Ma any issue for that matter, be it Hindutva also, jo sabke jeevan ko ya larger section of society ko impact kare ya pravavit kare, uska utna hi impact hoga. It is as simple as that. So I just now I explain the 80% is literally struggling for livelihood. Where it matters, Hindutva and this, it matters only to the extent of 5 to 10 percent of the people. But how it turns and what it turns out to be in the campaign, what media picks out. The reality is, in the 40 minutes speech of any leader for that matter, whether Congress, BJP or any other political party, they talk. 90% which is about 30-35 minutes about the welfare and development of the society and 5 to 10 minutes they talk about these emotional issues so called because unko usko bhi to connect karna hai na. So it is simply the packaging and marketing and in packaging and marketing you need to use all kind of trick to reach out to the all kind of voters. So but that is the reason why I always say 5 to 10%. And when you say Hindu, Hindu, my dear friend, if you buy a pen and if it is not writing, he will throw it out or replace it. So as with the government, who is leader, who is government, is a public representative. If they do not serve them, what are they for? You it's know, as simple as that. But, me, you know, media cannot talk about those issues. Media needs something more than that, which is called info, infotainment, and that is what you serve. I'm going to come to, Prof, uh, to Dr. Sanjay Kumar because he's in a rather candid mood. You know, you all did a poll at the start of the election or before the election, CSTS. I saw your, uh, you didn't give numbers, but what you said was effectively suggesting that issues like unemployment, Mahangai, what top of the mind. At the same time, you said there was a strong... Unemployment. And unemployment. Uh, Berozgari and uh, Mahangai. But at the same time, you said there was a lot of faith in Mr. Modi as a leader. When you looked at leadership across parties. Do you believe that something has changed from the time you started this election where you seem very confident that the BJP was going to get 300 plus? Effectively, that's what your survey seemed to suggest. Yeah. Today, you've come and said... 272 with allies 300 that's the question many people are asking has something changed in the last six to eight weeks for you sanjay kumar to be a little bit more cautious uh, no on the question of that you gave me four options and i picked up one which i thought is much closer but on a uh, serious note yes we did csds did a poll uh, before elections as you know that we don't come out with number of seats 
but this was a poll conducted in the first week of April. We concluded the poll by 8th of April. And our estimate, which was made public in the newspaper, was that 40% votes for BJP, uh, and Prime Minister Modi's popularity remains very high at 47%. But at the same time, the study also revealed, and it was like, like, like reported in widely in the newspaper, that we figured out that there are sections of voter who intended that they are likely to vote for BJP in the coming election, but we called them reluctant voters. They were not very happy with the performance of the government. They, would, uh, they didn't want this government to be re-elected by conviction, but they thought since there is no alternative, they will get re-elected. So, kya karein? even if there is berojgari, even if there is mahagai, we will end up voting for BJP even though we don't want this government to be re-elected. So, out of this 40, we made an estimate that really the BJP's vote share seems to be 35-36%. But there is four or five percent reluctant voter who might end up voting for BJP because they see no alternative. That was the situation in the first week of April. But I think as the election progressed, things may have changed on the ground, which is obvious from various quarters. And my own sense is that I think there is a movement of those reluctant voters who thought they are likely to vote for BJP on the election day. They seem to have moved away. No, because you're saying things have changed, which yeah. is obvious to everyone, but for those to whom it's not so obvious, explain what's changed and why between your earlier polls and now. I think the narrative changed. Uh, to be very frank, when a position party used to say, this is an election to save democracy, this is an election to save constitution, I used to laugh and I used to think, this is not an issue for the common man. But what has happened, I think, uh, what BJP thought is a strength, became a weakness because that was used by the opposition or that has been used by the opposition as a tool to counter. So when BJP, when Prime Minister Modi said 400 par NDA ke liye and 370 for BJP. And Congress and opposition started campaigning on this issue that, you know, BJP is aiming to get 370 because they want to change the constitution and that is why we are saving, we are saying this is an election to save the constitution. And they kept hammering hard that if they get 370, if they get a huge majority, they may be willing to change the constitution. And changing the constitution would mean erasing the memories of Ambedkar because he is seen as an icon for a large number of Dalits. So one big achievement of a Dalit leader, tall Dalit leader, Ambedkar, who has, you know, like, who, who is the architect of the constitution, that will also get changed. So this whole narrative that if BJP comes to power in a big way, many things will change. And this also connects to, Prime Minister Modi has mentioned, we will take strong step or we are going to initiate very strong measures as soon as we come to power in the first 10 days, uh, first 100 days. I think that started making a connect to the people on the ground. And then I think that started changing the narrative. So the big narrative of vote on Modi or vote on Hindutva, vote on temple, that disappeared. And these small issues of, yes, there is some substance. People started thinking there is a substance that there is a danger to the constitution. There is a substance that there is a danger to democracy. This started growing up like small plants here and there. And the aggregation is what we are get, looking at now. You know, Rahul, you've asked me, you've asked them what's happening. What are you going to tell us? You've also traveled across the country. You can't pin me down to a number and you can't, you are, you, are, you know, uh, you met the Prime Minister, you interviewed him. Does he sound like a Prime Minister who's getting 400 par or is that all part of this calculated choreography to create the personality cult? Do you think he's, he at all fears any possibility of not achieving Rajdeep, that target? Rajdeep, why don't you give him the same four options which you gave it to me? Okay, now four options. Uh, BJP plus allies 400, uh, BJP plus allies 370, 300, 272, 250, five options. What's most likely? Uh, Rajdeep, uh, Rajdeep, like uh, an IPL player, likes to hit big and smash out of the park and he gets great pleasure giving his, uh, you know, cricketing background. I stick to data and I'm very, very careful. I'd much rather leave a ball outside the off stump than go and poke my bat at it and get caught out. It slips. But that being said, I think this 400 par is something if you talk to any BJP leader, even they will accept it's just a walk ride. 
they also accept that some of this in some constituencies did backfire because there was built up anti-incumbency against local MPs. So some voters anecdotally started saying things like, you know, we like the Prime Minister, he's done good work, we don't mind him being back in power, but this is local MP, he has been very difficult for 10 years. He doesn't have to vote. Modi ji ke to aai rehen 400, isko hara de to 399 aa jayenge. And very quickly the BJP realized if a lot of people start thinking like this, that you know we'll beat the local candidate because we don't like him even though we like the prime minister, which is why it led to a change in positioning. The fact also is that there is unemployment, that there is distress and those are genuine factors. It can't, nobody can go away from them. But many of these people actually feel that prime minister Modi is probably the best agent to improve their life into the future. Unless there is a vehicle that can capitalize on the anti-incumbency, which only legitimately is built up over 10 years. You can't have a government 10 years on. Remember, 10 years of Manmohan Singh being in power, people didn't want to see his face, they didn't want the UPA back. The fact that he's still batting on a tricky wicket, but still batting and standing strong, says a lot for the man. You saw what uh, Farid and Ian Brahma said in a global context, right? Difficult to find leaders who 10 years on are still standing firm. Obviously, the ground is more shaky than it was five years ago when you had Pulwama and Balakot, but he's still standing strong and still standing firm until the time the opposition finds some way of being able to channelize the anti-incumbency. Does that simmering of discontent lead to regime change? I think that's really the question, Rajdeep. No, I, I, I agree, because I think you see discontent, but you didn't see anger. As you travel, you see anger in pockets. But I didn't see the kind of widespread anger we saw in 2014 when you want to get a government out of power. Uh, 2019 was in a way a Shraddhanjali to our martyrs. You know, people went out and said, nah, we want to, the Pulwama martyrs have to be in some way almost given a tribute and we've got to go and vote. Uh, and there was this muscular nationalism. In 2024, it's almost reassuringly back to an old style Indian election where you can go to Western Maharashtra and you said, you know, you sense the issues are very different from what they will be in a Vidarbha to a Marathwada. That's what India is. I think the good news is journalists, especially in studios, have got reality check in this election. You see, because we get carried away by a single narrative. The truth is, this is the most diverse Please, country. I think this is the fourth time since you've started. You've hit out at journalists in the media. Which of our journalists has been in the studio? No, no, I'm... No, All of them no, are out no, no, on I'm the ground. Is, no, no, I'm saying in general. You see, when, when, when we talk about elections... We fail to, an Indian election is the So let me rephrase what you said. Journalists in studios of other channels who talk <laughs> all the time without making any sense. They are the, you, you say this in such a general yeah, sweeping no, no, brush. No, no. I get worried, who is he talking about? No, no, I'm just saying that, you know, what, what is exciting about an Indian election is its sheer diversity. And it's great that when you can go on the ground as we can and actually experience that diversity. And I think that's what makes Indian elections so fascinating. But we want simple, today's world wants everything in an Instagram reel. That tell me in an Instagram reel who's winning. How do, you, how do you decode 543 seats in an Instagram reel? How do any of us tell you a number? We haven't traveled to 543 seats. If you don't travel to every, and that's why Pradeep tends to get it right. Since he complimented me, let me compliment him. That because... The new way of doing polling is very different from old. The old was random sampling. You went to a few constituencies and you made predictions for the whole area. Now you can't do that. Every constituency is different from the other. We went recently in eastern UP to Ghazipur, Jaunpur, Varanasi. Varanasi, the prime minister is going to win by a landslide. You go to Jaunpur and it's a classic old style Indian constituency. All kinds of conspiracies. The candidate there is a Mumbai Congress chief who's now joined the BJP, so the locals are not very happy. Who's this outsider? You're seeing India at play. This is the fascinating... India is not America Biden versus Trump. This is the most fascinating, complex country in the world, and we should celebrate it. You know, we get caught, and a democracy is dead. Indian democracy is not dead. Indian democracy is alive and kicking. It may be dead at times because of no level playing field, resources, institutions in trouble. But the voter in his own way knows how to inko ek din na ek na ek din arrogant leader ko mein sabak sikhaunga. He finds his own way to do it. How he does it is complicated. But he does it Rahul. Somewhere down the line I think we need to celebrate that diversity. And because Pradeep goes to all 543 constituencies, he has a better chance of getting it right than most. So I, my only thing to Pradeep and I remember telling him this in West Bengal two years ago or three years ago. And before that, once in Karnataka, please go and poll more women. 
I believe political parties get their calculations wrong because they don't go and poll enough women. Pollsters get it wrong because they don't poll women. The women are terrific. They don't, they have agency now. They don't go according to their husbands. In fact, one lady told me, they tenna karu dea, me ithe vote karna re. And I wish political parties spent more time understanding the mind of the Indian woman. If they had, that's right. I agree. Kali, you're welcome to come. You know, I, I, all the, I'm sure all the women here have far sharper political minds than the men. Because you know what the real livelihood issues are. Men are into this cultural politics. I heard Fareed Zakaria say that, right? That there's this cultural politics that's taken over from e economic issues. Come to India, Fareed. Meet livelihood issues in rural Bihar and you will know what really counts. There's no culture. When I'm a Musahar, and I'm from a family which is struggling to make 6,000 rupees a month, I want that five kilos of rice at free. It changes my life. You know, when you have 400 people in a bus meant for 100 people, <laughs> you realize what a free bus ride means to a woman. It gives her a sense of independence. Very easy for us to sit in rooms like this and sort of say, ye to freebie hai. Are freebie aapke liye hoga? For that woman, it's empowerment. She can go out on her own, do work. That's the new India. And we need to <laughs> recognize it. So, in last... Modi has recognized it. I'll give Modi credit, Rahul, for that. Modi and other leaders, Nitish Kumar, Jailalita, Mamta Banerjee, the clever leaders have realized that this is a Mahila vote. Hai. So, and whoever can... And now Congress has also belatedly realized with the Mahalakshmi scheme. Something that they should have been trumping much more instead of getting into wealth redistribution fights. You should have focused on the woman vote, you could win this election. So, Rajdeep, I think in last 10 years, you are coming to the fold of pollster. Now, I think you should retire from journalism. <laughs> you have started talking more like a pollster than a journalist. You know, because Gupta you Ji. are trying and getting to the ground and understanding the ground realities and you are speaking whatever. Last 10 years back, I know when I used to talk about condition of roads, electricity, water, you said that Pradeep is going to happen, let's leave it, let's talk about it. Where did this come from? I am telling you, 2016, 2016 when I gave Bengal election, I predicted 220 odd seats for TMC. You said Pradeep, TMC ke logo ka phone aara hai, I think Finance Minister, Mr. Mitra? Haan, Amit Mitra. Haan. Jis ka phone aata hai, public hi thodi bata hai. No, no, wo keh rahe hai, unka phone aara hai ki, ye to haam TMC bhi nahi aa sakti hai, lagta hai Pradeep Gupta ko Raj Sabha ticket chahi hai, iske liye Pradeep aisi baate kar rahe ho. Jab se Gupta ji aaya hai, number to bata nahi rahe, plus he's creating trouble for us. I don't know what's up here. He's just unnecessarily. Gupta ji. Yes. But, but, let's look at this election as we as we approach it as pollsters has it become more difficult therefore sanjay kumar to predict an indian election because there are so many complexities indian voters remarkable they vote differently in vidhan sabha and lok sabha we are seeing it i believe maharashtra voter will vote very differently for a state election four months from now is it more difficult now to predict the mind of an indian voter than it was say 10 years ago my job has become very easy because we don't predict elections anymore we used to do that earlier but even predicting trends yes we do what we do through our research we try and give a sense of how india voted how people have voted what has been the issues and yes we try and give you a sense of you means all the viewers readers a sense of how people have voted what has been the shift what has been the reasons you would not find us coming out with any numbers about the seats that's why my job is easy we don't predict an election but we try and give you a sense of the support base of political parties, which is to say the vote share, where does the party stand, which party is ahead and which party is trailing, and about what margin, whether it is 10%, 12% or 5%. Pradeep, but is it more difficult? No, not at all. I mean, I enjoy that thanks to Access My India team, and we enjoy the most difficult puzzle to solve. So, it is not at all difficult for us to predict, and I'm telling you this election as well. There are a state which is totally in one-sided. There are a state which is one-sided on the, with the other political party and there are states which is tough competition, what you call Which is the point. most difficult state this time according to you? Just wait for some time. No, no, that you can tell us. You can tell us wo, which is the no, most no, difficult no, state. Is it in the east or west? Or in the beach? 
just wait for June 1st, 6 p.m. onwards. You will get to see and know seat-by-seat seat analysis for all 543 seats. We can tell you which independent candidate is winning and where he is likely to win. So, don't worry. Food, food is under preparation. I don't want to serve you half kutpur. You will not like it. Kya Pradeep namak kam ho gaya. Kya baat karte ho tum? So I don't want that kind of you situation. Know, non-stop marketing machine. Our marketing guys can learn some lessons. Let's get a question from Rajesh Shah. Uh, he runs a champion kabaddi team, as you know. Also runs Mukund. Go for it. Yeah. Uh, hi, hi, Radhi. You seem to be on quite a roll this evening. So let's keep you rolling. All right. Now you spoke. Uh, you talked about. Uh, churning, a couple of nights ago, political earthquake was the phrase you used, and you've been going around talking to youth and the silent women. Tell us a little more. I used the earthquake only so that people would watch the show. Uh, it was pure marketing. You know, if I, if I said it's a normal election, who's going to watch it? You have to say it's an earthquake. You have to excite the... Uh, look, I, I just... I just think that this is a fascinating Indian election because it's, uh, see 2014 was a mood for change, 2019 was this muscular nationalism, 2024 is much more like a normal Indian election with the Modi factor overwhelming. You know, except for that, finally we are seeing real issues being debated on the ground. I'm not saying it will translate into votes. See a lot of chatter, we, had, you know, we chat, Beiroz Gari, rural distress, we chat about it. But I'm not so sure how much of that will translate into votes. But you know, it's just wonderful to meet uh, Indians who uh, still are excited about election. The worry I have is money power. I think the one reason why I think what depresses you is, I heard people in Telangana telling me that it now cost them 80 to 90 crores. 80 to 90 crores to fight a one Lok Sabha election in one seat, one candidate. I heard stories in Mumbai where a particular candidate apparently has spent 40 crores basically trying to bribe voters. I mean, then you're skewing democracy. That's not a level playing field. And even across the country, you know, the fact is the BJP is outspending its rivals 10 to 1. Does that make it a level playing field? So that's the worrying part. I mean, they have every right to spend what they want, but it would be nice if we could have a more even system. I don't know how we are going to get it. Maybe they have ideas, but... I have no way to know how this money power is going to end because then no, it means... Rajdeep, why are you blaming only the BJP when it comes to spending? Take for example, wherever the Congress is in power in southern states like sure. Karnataka uh, or Telangana has money not been spent. Take for example, DMK being in power in Tamil Nadu or the AIDMK before it. This is an ill that cuts across party lines. Sure, Let's sure. not just signal out one party for no, it. No, I'm saying pan-India, obviously the BJP is outspending its rivals, but you're right, in individual states where a party is in power, it's able to outspend. But I'm just seeing the scale of money, Rahul, which means that a very talented village Pradhan who doesn't have money cannot contest an election anymore if he's an honest man who has... Look at Mumbai or Thane. Most of the people who are contesting uh, Vidhan Sabha election will be real estate guys. They're the guys who've made money in the last 25, 30 years and they will contest elections. I mean, it, it's not ideal. No, I don't think so. That's but, my view. No, no. But Rajdi, what happened? See, you may have n number of money and you can spend n amount of money. But voter never ever vote based on your money power. So you are saying you cannot contest election. In my own assembly constituency, one side uh, candidate from BJP, filthy rich, spending lots of money. And the other side, my own friend who was, uh, we were friend and uh, studied together in primary school, he simply said, sir, bhai, mere paas koi paisa nahi hai, main aapke paas keval apna bike se hi aapke saath campaigning karunga. And he won by 350 votes, that too, postal votes. EVM votes, uh, BJP won by 57 votes, but through postal vote, he won by 350 votes. So, I mean, one can spend money, it's like uh, on your well-being, you can spend an amount of money, but I am wearing just uh, 200 rupees a t-shirt, so what does it matter? This is the kind of line Rahul Gandhi would give. 
you know dekho main itna main keval white t-shirt pehenta hu no no i am saying you said you cannot contest election without no, it's money it's becoming I'm more answering. and more difficult no, no i no, i disagree difficult. i it's think it's difficult. becoming more and more difficult rahul that's the point i'm making uh, it's other way round we are out of time on this session ruchu sharma is here everyone's waiting to listen to him but one thing seems quite clear before i wrap up what was earlier a no contest one way there's a lot of predictability around the election no matter what the end result at 2 pm on the 4th or at 7 pm on the 1st one thing is clear there's now enough buzz and excitement around the indian election that's what makes rajdeep's job my job that much more exciting and that's what all of us at the india day group are preparing for for that exit poll and for that counting day and we look forward to having you with us for the time being pradeep gupta I hope you've been practicing your dance moves because if you intend to dance, you know, just kind of there, there has to be one better move than this. You know, like a me, little better than that. Let me get my numbers right first. And then, then we'll decide what to do. Yeah, that's that's the other thing we need to clarify. It's not about who wins the election. If we get the numbers right, we will do a dance. If we get the numbers wrong, we will be more. Rajdeep's children told him, "Boss, do whatever you do, Dad. Don't dance." then they say pap bacche papa ki nahi sunte in this case the papa is not listening to the children rajdeep look i have two left feet but with pradeep i'll we'll do a jig i'm i'm pretty confident that by 12 o'clock on the 4th we should have clarity this is not going to be a long night that's my sense